Doug. And I'm Kathy. And, and this, this is, is Maggie, Maggie May. May. Join us as we follow the moon. Today, we're out to show you some of the most amazing finds that we have found in and around New Mexico. And we're actually right now out at Chloride, which is probably an hour off of the interstate, worth every minute of the drive. And we want to show you some of these hidden gems like chloride and a few of these other places we'll show you in our video today that you may want to include in your next travel. Thanks. Now chloride is considered a ghost town because it only has a population of 12 people. But this town was found in the 1880s as a silver mining community. And by 1881, it had eight saloons, three mercantile stores, two butcher shops, a hotel, livery stables, a candy store, a drug store, a Chinese laundry, the list goes on. It was a thriving community. And so by 1881, the US government put in a post office. Now this in front of you is the Grafton cabin. And we'll tell you a little bit more about the Grafton tie-in here in just a few moments. But this cabin had been put on display down in Las Cruces and then brought back up here and reassembled on the property. By 1900, after the government had decided that our currency was going to be based on the gold standard rather than silver, the town was just about abandoned. This bank, in fact, became a saloon shortly after it was built because the bank went belly up. Now at the back of these properties, they have actually put in some RV sites. So you can come out here and camp in this ghost town if you want. They're all full hookup too, which was amazing. I, I think it'd be cool. Yeah. They also do have some cabins that you can rent and stay there on the property. And they have some historical significance as well. Mm -hmm. But yeah, there you can see they're nice sites and, and they all have power, electric or power, water and sewer. Now, this is the Monte Cristo, and the Monte Cristo was originally a saloon. It was also used as a schoolhouse, and now it is a uh, little shop that sells locally made things, from quilts to painting, artwork, you name it. Beautiful things, and all made by people local. This in the back had been a dance hall. Wow. Yeah, I, the lady that worked there was just filled with all kinds of interesting stuff. Next door is the Pioneer Store. This opened in 1880 and ran through 1923. And the two gentlemen that owned it in 1923 boarded it up and walked away. When it was unboarded, 90% of what you see here was in the store. There were also food items still left in there, so the rats and the bats had kind of taken care of that. But everything that you see in here either was in this store when it was unboarded or was found in other buildings on the property, which means it probably came from the store anyhow. That's right. <laughs> There's a, a TNT detonator, something you have to have in a mining town. That's right. And you know, we didn't see the Roadrunner anywhere. No. But the uh, anything imaginable, and they're all just perfect. The neat thing is the lady there could tell you stories about everything that you saw. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she knew the history of, of everything there. That was the hanging tree. I kind of assume the name is self-explanatory. Yeah, probably. Now, just a short drive from there is Winston, New Mexico, and this was formerly the Grafton General Store. That cabin we showed you, the Grafton cabin, this was his general store. They put a couple of fuel pumps and a couple of ice machines, and boy, do they have a big ice business. As warm as it gets out there, I can understand why. Yeah, really. You could get just about anything in there. This was probably as general store of a general store as I've ever seen. Now next up, this is the view 
as you are coming through Faywood, New Mexico at the City of Rock State Park. This one is amazing to look at, but as you get into the state park, to me, it's even more amazing. It was pretty mind blowing. I'd never seen anything like this. You have these big mountains and you have the, the flats of the desert. This is their visitor center. And this is the city of rocks. Now these were all lava formations mm -hmm. and they it's, were massive. Yeah, they are. And from the road, when you go to turn in, you don't see any of this. No, there. you don't. But yeah, it's now we're going to show you a couple different sections. This section here was their desert botanical garden. It did have some really neat plants there. It did, and I mean, it's it's all desert it's landscape. It's to see that stuff flower. Yeah, yeah, it's really pretty. And there's actually a three and a half mile walking trail, but there's also good roads throughout the park that mm -hmm. you can drive and see everything also. The cactus were flowering when yeah. we were there. They were so pretty. But what made this so unique is it wasn't just a state park with a campground and these rock formations, but if you see between those rocks, you camp between those rocks. That was so cool. There was a small area off to the side that was full hookup. These were all dry camping spaces, but all the, the campgrounds are in and amongst these rocks. I think it would be so neat. I mean, it's... It, and then they've got the desert floor as their view, and it is beautiful mm -hmm. out there. There was an Airstream parked up there. They have quite a few spaces. They had quite a few full spaces. There weren't a lot of empties. This was a, a midweek trip through here. But the views are absolutely amazing. There's an area where you can drive up and you've got an overlook to the north and an overlook to the south and it identifies the different mountains out in the distance. It's so peaceful and quiet too. This one, not so much peaceful and quiet. This is the oh. Trinity site. Yeah. This was where the original nuclear blast took place out in the White Sands area on the north side of the White Sands Missile Range. We were driving past and saw that and thought we've got to include that in there. That's right. And we were actually driving down this road to go over to Three Rivers Petroglyphs. And this is one of the most extensive collection of petroglyphs in existence. Um, they're saying approximately 21,400 petroglyphs in this park. It is a one mile out, one mile back trail. It does loop, there's a right side and a left side, so you get to see different petroglyphs mm -hmm. each direction. Now the rocks are dark, and that's just a patina from the rock that has oxidized over time, and those were carved through that patina down to the regular color of the rock below it, and that's why they've preserved. Again, like the city of rocks, they're just kind of clumped in the middle of the desert. Mm -hmm. And you, it's, it's like Forrest Gump and his box of chocolates. Yeah. You never know which rock is gonna give you that petroglyph. Well, that's right. So you're watching for creatures to not step on, yeah. you're watching for petroglyphs, and you're watching to not trip on a rock and break your neck. So you are, you want to go through it slowly and take it all in. And wear boots. Mm -hmm. It was interesting, they talked about um, uh, the various petroglyphs and, and who might have drawn them. They could have just been little kids hanging out um, back 
back in the day. <laughs> they say sometime between 200 AD and 1450 AD, and this goes back to the, I'm gonna say it wrong, Mugion? Mugion. M Mugion yes. peoples, the same ones that did the uh, Gila Cliff Dwellings. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. These aren't anywhere close to each other. They're they're a couple hundred miles apart, probably. Yeah. But uh, everywhere you look, and some of these are rather large. Yeah. A couple foot square. And then some of them are little bitty things, mm -hmm. these little etchings. Now there you'll see in the number nine, some of these, they give you a map and, and show you where some in particular are located but there's way too many to have them numbered. Oh, Just yeah. some of the, the most famous ones were the ones that they had numbered. Yeah, some of them look like faces. Some of them look like the yeah, solar animals. systems. Yeah. And some of them, you really kind of have to draw your own conclusion as to what they were drawing. Some of them, I would swear, they saw creatures from another planet. Yeah, it's... Some of them you really don't have a good explanation for. It was very windy up there. Mm-hmm. As to what the petroglyphs mean and what the story was that was trying to be conveyed to us, we really don't know. Uh, some people believe that it's picture writing and each one is its own story. Some believe that put together they create a story. When you reach the end of the trail there's a shelter there that you can get out of the sunshine for a few minutes and rest and then we started back. And a lot of this, the, the two sides of the trail in places are maybe only 20, 30 foot apart. Mm -hmm. And you're seeing just the other side of the rock formations, but they have other petroglyphs on them. Right. So definitely as you go up, go to the right, follow it to the end, and then take the right as you're coming back, the opposite side and you'll see an entirely different set. Well worth the, uh, the trek. Definitely. And I, I felt as you went back through it, you saw more of them. That yes. there were fewer in the beginning and, and more as you went mm -hmm. on back. Now out in the distance, you'll see a lake and that lake is Elephant Butte Lake. Elephant Butte is a rock formation that we'll show you in a moment, but they created a dam and at the time it was built, it was the largest reservoir and largest dam in existence. And it was only shadowed over by Hoover Dam. That's right. When it was built. There is Elephant Butte sitting out there in the middle of it. So that's a man-made reservoir, and it's actually a man-made reservoir out of the Rio Grande River. Mm -hmm. That water was beautiful. That whole area is beautiful. And there is a state park on the one side of it, and on the other side is the government-owned land and we saw quite a few people down along the water with campers parked. Mm -hmm. You've got some dirt roads going down, you've got some steep grade going down, but once you're down there, you've got nice places to park down there and dry camp. But yeah, quite a view. And the Rio Grande flows right on down from it.
Well, Kathy, we're standing out here in front of Elephant Butte. What did you think of our time in New Mexico? I am just loving this. It is so beautiful. It, so many things. Oh. It's really caught me off guard because when I thought of New Mexico, I thought of desert. And yeah, there is a lot of desert, but the mountains and there's so much greenery. I mean, it really has surprised me very pleasantly. I've really enjoyed it. I have felt like we've been on a marathon of amazing places to catch up with. Uh, one week is not enough. That's right. <laughs> we're heading from here on up towards Albuquerque. So we're going to be around uh, New Mexico to a little bit different part of the state for a little while. So keep watching. And if you liked our video today, leave us a thumbs up. We do appreciate it. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe and uh, be sure to ring the notification bell and that way you'll know when every one of our new videos come out. And thank you for following us as we follow the moon. Thanks for watching today. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel. And be sure to ring the notification bell so you'll know when new videos come out. Don't forget to follow us on social media too.